My family saw something was wrong before I did, but I would just ignore them. Ah, you don't know what you're talking about. I, I, I can handle it. And little did I know that the, the further I, I kept using, the, 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 the further I lost myself and got deeper in, into, in, I call it a black hole. Did, did you go to school while uh, this was happening? No. What happened to high school? I, as far as I went was junior high school. And that because the of the drugs, grade. you couldn't go any further. Yep. Now, were there other behavior. people in your neighborhood? Was it was it a primarily black neighborhood yeah. that you were in? I was raised in Brooklyn. Were, were there other people there who were using drugs? Yeah. Mainly, they were like marijuana, uh, alcohol. Um, but a lot of times, I didn't, they, I didn't see them. They, if they were using cocaine, they would never use it around me. They always would give me either the alcohol or the marijuana because they figured that's the only thing I could handle. Um, until eventually I, I told myself, listen, I know y'all use other stuff, right? Come on, give me some other stuff, right? So one guy, he gave me, um, which was shocking to me, and because it, it was my birthday, he gave me an eight ball. And the eight ball being? Uh, uh, almost like uh, 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 almost like, almost like like uh, an ounce of cocaine. It's like in a, in, in a half of a of cellophane bag. So was he just giving this to you because he wanted to be nice? No, he said he's, it was um, a, a birthday present. He said, "Here, you you earned it. You're you're a man now, so you can handle it." And I did the whole thing right, the whole thing of cocaine right, and got my nose was bleeding. I had a headache, and um. Did you ever I see started, this individual again? No, never again. So he just gave it to you and disappeared. Uh, now, when we talk about the insanity of drug use, how insane did it get? Tell me about the worst worst parts of your life. When it had to deal, and how how long were you using from fifteen up until from when? From fifteen up until about um, for all, almost up until present. And up you're how old now? Two thousand and seven is the last time I used. And how old are you now? Forty eight. I'll be so, forty nine on the t on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So many many years of drug yeah, use, nonstop. Like 30, Forty years. And was, how bad how bad did it get? Um, it got to the point where almost toward middle ways and toward the end. My family cut me off because every time I came in, um, when I came to home to them, right, when I got into, into using crack, with, that was my total downfall. It, it wiped me completely out, took everything away from me. Um, I started stealing from them, something I, I, I never said I would do. Um, one time I took, the, my, my mother was, had got real drunk the night before, and I took the rent money and the food stamps, and while she woke up, she was panicked. She couldn't find the money. And they knew my patterns. My sister, my older sister knew me. When my mother told her that the money was missing, right, she grabbed the keys, locked the front door, grabbed the chair, slammed it in front of me, went in the closet, got an aluminum bat, grabbed me by my collar, slammed me in the chair. She said, if you so much as breathe, I will kill you. We better find that money. That's when I started really praying. I said, Lord, please don't let them find that money. Please don't so, let them find uh, it. So... When we talk about how bad it got, your suppliers. Oh, um, what were they doing with you? Because someone they would had to give be me feeding credit. you this. They would always give me credit because they knew I was always good for it, and I would, I would always pay them, but they would charge me double. So, what kind of relationship did you have with them, where now they started charging you double for credit and so on? Um, they uh, basically, I think they saw that. Oh, well, we got a fool here. Oh, we he's so so hooked. All we got to do is tell him we'll give him X amount. And we know he's going to give us twice what we ask because he needs it that bad. And that's how it got. I used to owe people and not remember I owed them. And I couldn't say I didn't owe them, so I was always paying them. Were you able to get out to work? I mean, especially towards the end of this addiction where no. it was at the absolute worst? Why not? Because um, I, when, I, when I used, right, I isolated. I didn't want to be around people or anybody, right, because my paranoia was so bad that I used to hear things. And see things around me and feel stuff crawling on me that wasn't even there. And one time I actually stripped and locked myself in, my, in, in, in the house and would not come out. I duct taped the doors and the windows, put a black sheet on because I didn't like sunlight. So sunlight you actually, became, you, you actually become, uh, became psychotic. Yeah. I was afraid that if I go outside. Where, where, where did you get the money for this, by the way? A lot of you times. You weren't really working? No. What were you doing? Um, God I, forbid, were you selling your body? What was going mm, on? That that see, that was one of my yes. I never got to that point. Mm -hmm. um, I always found a way of hustling by either I stole from somebody else or um, 
I sold my own property. Mainly anything that, that was sellable, I took it out and I either sold it in the street or took it to the pawn shop. So and when then, you wanted to stop using the people who were supplying you, the drug dealers, they did hear. they say you could walk away? No, or what they didn't happened? want to hear it. They um, told me, say, oh, well, well, you're just having a bad time right now. Um, just just give yourself a little rest until tomorrow. Maybe it'll be, things will be a little bit more different. And the next day, just because I came down, that's the only difference. But when they gave, fed me, gave me more, it just put me, started me right back where I left off at, back at the beginning. Like, so how did you get away? Um, how did you get away from the drugs? How did you get away from the drug dealers? Um, May on May third, two thousand and seven. Um, my one my clean when my clean date is April the eighteenth. That's the day mm -hmm. I officially stopped mm -hmm. using, mm -hmm. and I stopped cold turkey. I mm -hmm. stopped without rehab or anything because the dealers would not let me go anywhere. Um. Did you become a prisoner to them? In my own apartment. I lived in the, I had an apartment at home. They wouldn't let you out they of your apartment. They took my house, they took my mailbox key and they took the door key. And then they was they would have someone posted in my house with me to make sure I didn't leave because when I when I got tired of all the beating, I used to disappear for 2 and 3 days and not come home. They beat you? Yeah. Beat me with they beat me with whatever was in the house or um like uh, if, if if there was a stick there, a broom, they beat me with that, or they would punch me in my face. Because at that time, I didn't look like I look now. I was like 90 pounds soaking wet with two bricks in my pocket. My jaws were all sunk in, my forehead. You could take two fingers and lock them around my wrist. That's how skinny I was. From the drug use? From the drug, yeah. Because I wouldn't eat, I wouldn't drink, nothing. T tell us very quickly, because we are running out of time. How did you get away from them? Um, May 3rd. 2007, um, they basically left me for two minutes at that time because I remember what the, what the father told me. Left me for two minutes. And in that two minutes, I, that's all I needed. I grabbed everything I could and I shoved it in the backpack, tore up all my papers, and I left my apartment door wide open and I ran. I went straight to the shelter, um, to the men's shelter at Ward's Island, and, and in turn, a gentleman from the program, Narcan Frito, came in. And asked me, he said, if there's somebody in this TV room that needs help, please come forward. And out of three people in that TV room, I was the only one that met their criteria um, as far as um, medical coverage, mm -hmm. financial coverage. Mm -hmm. And um, basically, that's when my recovery began. So um, you had had enough. You wanted out. You wanted a new life. You had hit rock bottom. Yeah. I just gave up everything. I had really had nothing. My, my apartment only had a futon mattress on the floor, a TV. In the stereo, that's was it. There, was there one aha experience where you said, that's it, I want to stop using? When um, they, they beat me in my face and I had to go have a minor surgery done on my back to remove two damage, um, the C4, C5 vertebrae in my back with damage, causing paralysis in both arms. I, couldn't, I had to go through physical therapy for a whole year to regain use of both my hands. Um, as a result, today... Um, I have full use of my hands, um, and due to the fact that I stopped using, I um, I regained my life back. And can you tell us what it is that maintains you as far as your sobriety, advice that you can give to people out there who are still using or perhaps who are now uh, clean from drugs, what it is that worked for you and that can possibly work for them? Well, basically... Um, I um, belong to a 12-step fellowship that um, I have a, um, a sponsor that um, basically I talk to whenever I'm not going to my therapy, I talk to my sponsor on my issues that I need to work on. And the the rooms have, uh, have they're my, they've been my saving grace. They have been the, the, the difference between the space between me and drug, use, and drug addiction. They've helped me guide myself in the right direction back to the person that, that God meant for me to be because the person I was, I didn't like him. I didn't know him today. I like looking in the mirror and anybody who just might be out there suffering that might want to get their lives together. The way to do it is through the 12, through the 12 steps and the 12 traditions. All right. Alonzo H., thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. And uh, thank you for sharing uh, something that is so intimate, that has been such a struggle for you, but you've made it. And if you've made it, 
uh, others of can. you out there can make it too. But the twelve step programs are important. Um, I think people have to hit uh, rock bottom in order to realize that they do have to get off the drugs. It destroys yes, them physically, do. destroys their mental health, as they say. Uh, if you don't stop using, what is what is the old saying? Either Jails, you're going to end up in jail, in an institution, death. or okay. dead. So the time to stop is now. And, of course, it destroys families. And we'll talk more about that in the second segment that we'll be bringing you on drug abuse and African Americans. Alonzo H., once again, thank you. God bless and continue your sobriety and your path to recovery. We'll be back with more.